So in the previous video, we had A and B, and we found the cross product of A and B. So A cross B is 9i, take away 17j plus 7k. So that was one of the results from the previous video. Now what we're going to do is we're going to investigate one of the properties of the cross product um, using this as a springboard example. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the length of A, the length of B, and the length of A cross B. Okay, and we're going to see if there's any kind of uh, joining property for these. So for the length of A, we would have the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. So that's root 14. And then the length of B would be the square root of minus 2 squared. Uh, plus 1 squared plus 5 squared. So that's root 30. And the length of A cross B is the square root of 9 squared plus negative 17 squared uh, plus 7 squared. And that gets us the square root of 419. So really, it would be interesting to see um, how this relates to these. Okay, so what we're going to take a look at is the scalar product. Now the scalar product said that a dot b is equal to mod a mod b cosine theta. Okay, so for this I would be able to work out cosine theta for a and b. So first of all a dot with b is 3 times minus 2, so minus 6, plus 2 times 1, plus 1 times 5. And that's going to be equal to, oh, sorry, root 14 times root 30 cosine theta. So we have uh, minus 6 plus 2 is uh, minus 4, plus 5 is 1, over root 14 times root 30. So 14 times 30 is 420. So that would be the square root of 420. Now, you should always already be kind of going, ooh, OK, that's interesting how we're, <laughs> we're only one away from the... Uh, 419 that we had previously, okay? So let's draw a diagram to kind of just visually represent what we're looking at here, right? We've got these two vectors, okay? So we've got these two vectors, um, A and B, in 3D. Okay, I've just centred at the, them uh, as if they're at the same point. And we know that theta is this angle here, okay, the angle between them. So what I could do is I could actually work out the sine of that angle theta. Now assuming, of course, that theta is acute, I can do this. I can draw a right angle triangle. Here's theta. OK, and we've got the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so 1 over the square root of 420. And so the opposite side would be the square root of 420 take away 1. So this is the square root of 419. OK, so what that's telling me is that sine of the angle theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so root 419 over root 420. Okay, so that's sine of my angle. Now, the sine of the angle, okay, if you're thinking about what we do with sine uh, when we're looking at two sides. Um, and the interior angle between them, the trapped angle, then you should be thinking about the area of a triangle formula, one-half AB sine C. So actually, 
what we would get if we used that formula would be 1 half times the length of a, which is root 14, times by the length of b, which is root 30, times by sine of c, right, sine of theta, so root 419 over root 420. Okay, so this would be the area of that triangle. Okay, so what do we get here? Now, 14 times 30 was 420. So that's root 420. So we've actually got one half of root 419 here. So this area is half of the length of the vector product. So actually, if I draw a whole parallelogram made up from these vectors, then the area of that whole parallelogram is the length of the cross product. So if you had a cross product, here it is, A cross B, and remember it is at right angles to both A and B, because it's perpendicular to both of them, then the length of A cross B, that length there, is actually the same as the area of the parallelogram with A and B as its sides. This calculation is showing that to be the case. So that kind of shows you how the cross product can be defined and saying, OK, well, if that's the case, then the vector product of A and B, OK, the length of it, is equal to the length of A times the length of B times by sine of the angle. OK, so the length is equal to the length of A times the length of B times sine of the angle. So the vector product itself is the length of A times the length of B times sine of the angle. But that's not enough because, because remember, this is a vector. This is not a vector. So this is the length of a vector that is perpendicular to both A and B. So we can multiply that by a unit vector, n hat, where n hat is a unit vector that is perpendicular to both A and B. So this is an alternative way of defining the vector product. OK? And what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to prove this is the case in general, because we've just seen via a single example that this is the case. So I'm going to prove that this is the case in general. OK, now that video I'm labelling uh, as extension uh, because you wouldn't have to replicate an exam. So it's really there for interest to show you that you can show that this is equivalent to this.